Let me give you some ways of thinking. I love questions. Questions like, are your emotions controlling you? What are your core negative emotions? Are your, is the dialogue inside your head healthy? Do you differentiate between the lies you believe and the truth you believe? Okay, so we gotta take our thoughts captive and we gotta see beliefs from God's point of view. Well, how do you do that? Well, first off, Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is living and active. It's sharpened in any double-edged sword. It divides and it changes our thinking. Wow, isn't that awesome? I can use God's word to change my thinking. We talked about that a lot before. I want you to use your, the Bible to transform to your thinking, to look at things from God's point of view. I can look inward, my point of view. I can look outward, the world's point of view. I can look upward and see God's point of view. God's point of view is healthy. God's point of view is hard to understand. Example, Lazarus, he died. Jesus was late. Mary and Martha, not, yeah, Mary and Martha, the two sisters, were mad that Jesus wasn't there. And Jesus asked them, do you believe I'm the resurrection and the life? And they said, yes, we believe that at the end times, he's going he's to resurrect. They had no idea what Jesus was going to do. Jesus resurrected Lazarus right then, showing his power. We got to recognize that God has power over our events. That should transform our thinking. Now, what happens to the mind? The mind can get frequently boggled. So what is boggled thinking? It's that twisted, toxic, troubling, tormented, terrifying thinking. Charlie, wait a minute. You're telling me my thoughts scare me. Absolutely. For you to have a fear, you have to have fearful thoughts. For you to be bitter, you have to have bitter thoughts. So the neat thing is to change an emotion, you have to change the way you think. Example. If I go to the doctor, I'm a patient. If you look up the Latin word for patient, it literally means one who suffers. Now, in stress right now, we're suffering. It's like we're God's patient and we're letting God be the doctor. We're suffering, in fact, long suffering. And how do we handle it? We'll talk about that in the next session. We got to look at God and say, okay, how do I handle my stress? How do I handle people? Today we're talking about our beliefs. Okay, so our belief system. The first thing you got to do is you got to look at God and say, God, I give you permission to change the way I think. Father, I want my thoughts to be your thoughts. I want your ways to be my ways. Now, God loves that. One of my clients came in the other day and she said to me, she's angry. And I've been trying to teach her, she's angry, it's okay to be angry. She was shocked at me, I gave her a high five. She looked at me, she goes, you told me, you gave me a high five. I said, I did. She said, it's because I admitted I was angry. Correct. And then we talked it back. What is she believing? What was the event? We can do the same thing. If you're stressing out, ask yourself, what am I thinking? Let me give you a great verse. Revelation, a book that terrifies people. The word revelation means to unveil. So revelation is God's unveiling of end times. And it says in Revelation 11, 15. The, the seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, the kingdom of our world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. Isn't that cool? My belief system has to be that God will reign. Wow. My belief system has to be that God's in control. Now, I believe he is. In fact, he's more in control than I think he is. I think the world's spinning out of control, and God goes, I got this. 
Now, once again, Isaiah 55, his ways aren't my ways. His, think, his thoughts aren't my thoughts. By the way, if my ways, if God's ways were my ways and God's thoughts were my thoughts, our world would be screwed up. Lazarus wouldn't have died. The plague wouldn't have happened. There'd be no riots. There'd be no fires on the West Coast. There'd be no hurricanes on the southern part of our nation. Huh. And I think my ways are better. I think my thoughts are better. No, the Bible teaches again, God's ways and his thoughts are higher than the heavens. Isn't that amazing? So I got to look at God and say, under stress, how do I think? Under stress, what type of dialogue do I have in my head? Another way of looking at it. Have you ever been around people that try to impress you with their thinking? They'll give you some statement. They're trying to impress you. Sometimes I think our thinking, we give God our thoughts to try to impress him. I saw a great joke the other day. It said this. I hate it when people try to impress me with their knowledge of people like Picasso and his music. Let me say it again. Picasso and his music. Let me do you a favor. I don't think Picasso wrote music. I think he painted. Some of his paintings don't make sense to me. I saw this one painting the other day that showed a big blue dot. This was art. This guy designed this. It's in a museum. And I'm thinking, wow, it's a big blue dot. I could do that. I'm not an artist. God's the artist. God's the one in control. So we look at God and say, okay, God, be in control. Now, there's some great questions we can ask of God, or God can ask of us. In John 1.38, it says, what do you want? I think at times it's okay to tell God what we want. I found that phrase in Scripture, what do you want, in 12 times in the Scripture. The first question God asked in the Bible, I believe, was in Genesis 3.9, where he said, where are you? Cain was hiding. Here's what's in incredible. Where are, that question, is found 29 times. Do you love me? John 21, 17. I think we got to look at God and say, I love you. I recognize in your, you're in control. John 5, 6. Do you want to get well? Wow. Matthew, who do you say I am? Do we believe that God's the ruler of the universe? Does that affect our belief system? Does that affect the consequence of my behavior? You know, Acts 26, 8. Paul says this to the, the political leaders. Why do you think it's incredible that God raises the dead? So here's me as a Christian counselor. I frequently ask my clients, why do you think that? Now, if they can give me logic to their thinking and their thinking has proof behind it, that's probably okay. So all of a sudden, I want you to question your thinking. I would love for you to say, why am I thinking that? Where's my evidence? How credible is my source for believing that? See, one of the dangers with isolation is very simple. One of the dangers is we let our own thoughts become our counselors. Now, I'll make a deal with you. You guys know me as a Christian counselor. When you make your own thoughts, your, your own counseling, it's going to be warped. Because we don't see things clearly. Once again, Colossians 2.8 says we can be taken captive by hollow and deceptive philosophies. We can be taken captive by thoughts, beliefs, and philosophies. God doesn't want us to be free. Or excuse me, God doesn't want us to be slaves. He wants us to be free. God gives us truth to set us free. Okay, so I'm going to ask a question. In our world, do we see what's going on from God's point of view or from ours? Do we have beliefs that praise God? Or do we have beliefs that go against what God believes? Do you really believe with your heart, whatever you're going through, God's got this? 
Do you believe John 14, 6? He is the way, the truth, and the life. Do you believe that? So what? Thoughts become beliefs. Beliefs become philosophies. We need to develop a Christian worldview of the whole world. We need to see people from God's point of view. We need to see events from, from God's point of view. We need to see ourselves from God's point of view. We need to see God from God's point of view. Now, I got a challenge for you. Every day, read the Bible. Now, don't read it as an assignment. Don't read it to check off. Read it and meditate. Marinate on the Word of God. Now, I will promise you, if you start marinating on the Word of God, your thoughts are going to change. Through the Holy Spirit, your thoughts will become radically different. And then your behavior and your emotions different. Do we live in stressful times? Absolutely. Are these times bad? Yes. Is God good? Yes. Is God's goodness greater than the bad taking place in society? Absolutely. Think on that. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for today. God, I ask that you would take our belief system. And Father God, you would transform our beliefs into what you believe. Father, we would take captive beliefs that our beliefs would be pleasing to you. Our beliefs would praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.